Trapper gets a, gets a lot of flack because a lot of people they just don't understand. A river through the valley, there's a tree with a hanging rope. And on a bank you lay about God, this is about the outdoors. Hunting, fishing, trapping. This episode brought to you by Jasco Products, makers of the Eco Survivor Lantern. Stand up to the elements. Friend knife making. Quality knives made in America. Beanville Outdoors, home of Old South Trapping Lures and Old South Deer Lures. The All-American Sun Oven, the ultimate solar appliance. Red Feather Archery, home of the talons. Nice targets, a superior shooting experience. And the Quapaw Casino. Hello there, welcome to the show. On today's episode, we're gonna be trapping while scouting or scouting while trapping. Yes, scouting while trapping. Uh, the one good thing about being a total outdoorsman and getting to hunt, fish, and trap and trying to spend as much time as you can all year long out in the woods is you get to learn stuff all year long. Uh, on today's episode, we're going to be doing a little scouting on the trap line, and I tell you what, there's nothing better. It's late season, you know, closing down of the season, you're not, there's not the pressure to kill it, you know, you're just out there trying to figure things out and I tell you what that is some of the best scouting you can do is late season scouting or even shed hunting if that's your thing I hope you enjoy this video stick around at the end we're gonna be eating some rabbit We've got a great recipe so stick around I know you're gonna enjoy it well I got me another mink I set this little set just for a mink and uh, I noticed that I had a den up here and uh, I'll show you how to make this set. It, it's just specially for mink. Uh, you really ain't gonna get, you might get a coon occasionally, but you know, you, generally everything leaves it alone but a mink. And uh, I'll explain that on the remake of why they like it. First thing you wanna do is read up on the animals you're trapping. That helps out a lot. I got a whole bunch of old fur fishing games that I read every year. and. Uh, <coughs> What you learn about the mink is, uh, is they like dark places. I found a hole up here that I know is being used. It's fresh. So I came down here, downstream of the hole, and there really ain't no place to dig a pocket set, which is a good mink catcher's good pocket set. So what I did is I just created a tunnel, and I'll show you how I did that. I gathered up a bunch of these rocks, big rocks. Once you've got like a little shanty roof built, covered up with leaves. Make sure the back of it can't be accessed. I usually put a big rock in the back of it. There you go. My, I call this a debris tunnel. The mink comes along this edge because they work creek edges. Smells that fish up in there. You know, looks up in there and he ain't afraid to go up in there. He likes them dark places, so. You know, he's gonna come on up in there and I got my trap sitting right here at the mouth. The 
Eco Survivor Lantern stand up to the elements. Utilizing patented technology, the Eco Survivor Lantern delivers a consistent white light with unprecedented energy efficiency. This Lantern series provides an omnidirectional battery operated solution that omits a brilliant white 350 lumen light with a range of up to 50 feet. 3-level dimming feature, durable locking carabiner handle, providing versatility allowing it to be carried or hung anywhere. The Eco Survivor Lantern's tough, rugged exterior and design makes it perfect for any outdoor adventure. Utilizing the ever popular Realtree design in pink, orange, and green, the Eco Survivor Lantern suits your personality. Are you tired of changing out targets all the time? then I'd like to introduce you to Nice Targets, a superior shooting experience. Recyclable, long-lasting, weather and UV resistant. 100% more shots equals half the cost. Nice Targets, high resolution, photorealistic. Nice Targets are quality, cost-efficient targets made in America, and plus, just look how good they look. I'd hang this stuff up in my wall. It's like having art in the room. They also make traditional style range targets for all your other shooting needs. The next time you have to choose between paper and plastic, go with the plastic. Red Feather Archery presents the Talon. This devastating small game head is machined from a solid piece of steel, combining the blunt force trauma of a traditional blunt with the cutting edges of a three-blade broadhead. Scallop tip helps reduce snaking for a better arrow retrieval with field point-like accuracy. Red Feather Archery, the Talon. As you can see, I got a possum here. Uh, pretty good size. I'm going to take him home skinning. Uh, I'm going to change this trap out. I just ain't got time today to do a lot of setting. So it's just kind of a quick check and get out. But uh, tomorrow, I'm going to come back and set these up. This is just a scent post set with a skull. And I put a dirt hole underneath it, hoping to get a coyote. But got a lot of possums. Got to thin these suckers out because. Uh, they will not hesitate when they're scavenging along the ground and they can smell really good. If they find a nest of turkey eggs, they will not hesitate to help themselves. So I try to take a number of these out a year and it's pretty dang easy considering that possums will run into any set you got. So I'm gonna take him home and skin him and off to the next. Well, another good thing about trapping is you get to scout a little bit when you're not worried about deer hunting. And uh, tell you what, that's pretty good rub right there. There's another older rub right over there. And uh, these were both here early season, but you know, this one's been hit again. And then I found another one right down the way. So I got me a rub line. And, you know, this is good scouting. I'm not worried about, you know, jumping a deer or shooting a deer. I ain't got no buck tags left. I've got plenty of does. It's getting mid-January. Season's almost closed. And I'm just out here scouting. Been finding lots of droppings. I mean, piles of it through here. That right here give me a good indication of where I need to start shed hunting here next month. Right up here, one of these... Uh, what we call a sanctuary zone. And I tell you what, I'm gonna be in there and it won't matter if I scare anything out. I ain't deer hunting, I'm just looking for sheds and there's plenty of time till next season. So even though we don't hunt in these sanctuary zones, I'm gonna take a stroll through there and see if I can't find the sheds. Probably in another, oh, another month, I'll be in there. Hopefully I can find this guy's sheds.
just shut down, so I'm gonna take take two. It's it's cold out here. Okay, it ain't even 20 degrees out here. But like I said, you want big deer on your property. You, I mean, all those deer out there, they're headed to one spot. That's our sanctuary zone. It's a spot that we don't go into. We don't walk through it. We don't hunt it at all during season. And I might go in there and shed hunt, but like I said on that last video, you got to have these sanctuary zones. Those that big buck sign is going in and out of that sanctuary, okay? And you got to. I don't care if you have 40 acres and that's all you have. Take time to find a spot, a thick, nice, nasty thicket that they're going to use occasionally and stay out of there and don't ever go in there ever and those deer will pick up on that spot being a safe zone and that's where they're going to be and they're going to hide in there and you're going to get more and bigger deer okay it's just going to happen uh, they find safety that's where they're going to be especially after you know 90 days of us chasing them around have that spot put back for the deer no one's allowed to go into you don't walk through it at all during season maybe go through it once shed hunting or just stay on the all i do is stay on the outside edge all of our big bucks that me and my dad have killed on this property for years are cut deer coming in and out of these sanctuary zones take that tip and you will have more success okay don't just go bailing off into your hunting land and just you know hunting every dang inch of it Give the deer a place to hide, and you'll have bigger and better deer herds. This is freaking exciting, man. My birthday's tomorrow, last day of season. Ah, it breaks my heart. Boy, I wish I had my bow, though, because that doe right there, I'd have stuck her 25 yards, you bet. <laughs> oh, let's go check some traps. Autism awareness isn't just about the statistics. It's about the facts, the people involved, and the struggles they go through daily. The All-American Sun Oven, the ultimate solar appliance. At only 22 pounds, this quality American-made product is perfect for camping, hunting, or an emergency situation. The ability to bake, boil, steam, and dehydrate with just the power of the sun. Friend knife making, quality knives made right here in the good old US of A. Hand forged custom knives, hawks, and leather working. You can visit their website at www.friendknifemaking.com. <laughs> Hammer Time Custom Calls by Joey Dobbs. If you all know me, you know I use Joey Dobbs Hammer Time Custom Calls. Joey, he makes these all handmade and custom to order. He has a lot of different woods you can choose from and stuff. So check him out on Facebook or email him at joeydop at gmail.com. You want to get closer to game? You better have your game face on. Are you ready to take your trapping and hunting to the next level? Visit beanvilleoutdoors.com home of Old South Trapping Lures. Old South Deer Lures. They also have traps, snares, trap supplies, fur handling gear, books, DVDs, clothing, and a wealth of knowledge for any outdoorsman. Beanville Outdoors. Check them out today at www.beanvilleoutdoors.com. Now this is the set that just caught that coon. As you can see, I'm wired off to that big stump right there, which he didn't drag very far, <clears throat> and stayed in the creek. Got my trap submerged right in front of it, Duke one and a half. And I just got a hole dug out underneath these roots. I've caught mink here, I've caught coon here, so this is just one of my primary spots. It's a there's a nice crossing right here. They come out of this bottom, come across right here, cross this little creek, and head out 
to the open fields. We also do a lot of camping right here too. That's what the tarp's all about. I got him in the back foot, which is good. That's one thing about that measurement for coyotes. Nine inches back and three inches over, one side or the other. You seem to always, I mean, maybe not, probably not always, but a lot of times you uh, you catch the animal, especially the coon, by the back foot. So, and that's where you want to catch a coon. They will, you will have that coon there if you catch him by the back foot catch him by the front foot and he might not stick around. But he tore this head up pretty bad. Oh that needs a bit heavy thing. Yeah. Ain't the prettiest coon but I'll take him. I just kind of put a dirt hole here up, again, up near this tree and I caught this rabbit hanging above me the other day and of course I would have ate him but something had already chewed the head off of him so you know I don't want to take no chances of contracting rabies or nothing so I just hung him up in that tree and looks like that coon got a little bit of it but Well, as you can see, I caught a rabbit on this one, and since he was alive when I got here, he's good to eat. Caught him by the very tip of the front foot. Then that meat's all good right there. And if I needed it, I could use it for extra bait on another set. But it's rabbit season. These things are too good to eat just to leave them, let the coyotes have them. And that's what happens a lot of times when you get here to shake your traps. The coyotes have already killed it and ate it or a stray dog or whatever. But uh, what I got here is just a scent post set. And when you're using urine, it attracts other animals than just what, you know, coyotes and stuff. It'll attract rabbit and, you know, anything will come up and smell urine a lot of times, even if it's predator urine. And another thing I learned by trapping in this area is that I need to go rabbit hunting down here. <laughs> but... Uh, if you use salt to try and keep your beds from freezing up at night, your trap beds, you'll catch rabbits sometimes because uh, they they're attracted to that salt. In a survival situation, that would be good to know that, that put a little salt in a rabbit area with a trap nearby and you can catch them. But you got to get there quick because an every animal out here, every predator out here eats rabbits. Now I got a cat set I'm gonna go make with a rabbit, but I brought my own rabbit. So I wanna take this one home and eat him. But now this is why I added those chain links on to this. There's rabbit hair and some blood in there. I can just unhook this trap. Take it off. And come back in with another trap. This is a Bridger number two. These are good traps. And now I just reset this the way I had it. Now there's a little bit of blood around. That's going to intrigue the animal. I'm going to put a little bit more scent on this little stump right here. And hopefully we can catch us what we're wanting. We're going to be doing some cooking today. I know you all been wanting some cooking videos. Uh, starting to get in the mood to cook. So, got a rabbit over here. We're going to cook it. And we're not going to do the traditional fried rabbit, all that, you know. We're going to do it a little bit different, a little bit healthier. 
So stick around. I know you're gonna like this. All right, so I got my rabbit here. It's in a second change of water. It's getting pretty, it's pretty cleared up. I like to soak my meat at least overnight in salt water. And of course, we got a big old crock pot here that I've had warming up. So basically, all we're gonna do this is gonna be a real quick and easy recipe. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sit him in there, drain him off a little bit. Sit him in there. And while he's getting nice and comfortable in there, cover him up. We'll start getting some vegetables cut. All right, this is what we're gonna put in there. Carrots, you can peel them if you want, I don't, but I do wash everything. Celery onions, baby bell peppers, and some squash. Uh, now the, all this stuff can go in there right now. Those can, and those can. I'd use paper plates too to cut, to cut them on because it keeps me from having to do any dishes. Get some squash in there. All right, so I got some olive oil over here getting hot on the stove. We just want to get those uh, flavors really mixing and, I mean, you can smell it. Oh, it's really starting to smell good, so. That's when we want to stop. We're going to dump all this in there, olive oil and all. Right in there on top of that. We're just going to put a little garlic powder in there. The lemon pepper. That lemon's going to add a little zing to it. And just some salt. I got this on high. Uh, I'm going to go for four hours on high. And then we'll check it. And on this one, it automatically drops down to warm after you've run the high temperature out and it goes for another set like four hours on warm so pretty much just set it and forget it until oh we'll check it in about four or five hours the crock pot man I love using that to cook wild game cooks it slow and you just set it and forget it I love it keep coming back keep liking us keep subscribing us on uh, YouTube keep liking us on Facebook you can get a hold of me by email. You can go to our website, www.wildfortheoutdoors.com. Go to the Contact Us page. You can contact me right there. And uh, get out there and kill your rabbit, man. Good eating, healthy, GMO free. Well, hope you enjoyed the episode today. I told you it was a good one. Uh, if you've been enjoying these, do me a favor. Go like us on Facebook and check us out on YouTube. And the email or the website at the end uh, this is all you know because of you guys and we need your support we don't have paid advertisements or nothing like that you all the ones that put us out there so please go like us on Facebook I post on there daily if I can and uh, you can talk to me and ask me questions and all that so remember wild for the outdoors and uh, next week who knows what we're gonna be doing come back here check us out I love you all, God bless, and I'll see you next time.
You can also see them at www.wildforthoutdoors.com. And don't forget to go to Facebook, like us, share us with your friends. Hey, remember, it's your God-given duty to manage this land. 